Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, I wanted to take the time to set up the, the very next endpoint in our API that we're going to then set up, which we're going to deem as a route that needs to be protected and has to have authentication to access the information from our API. We're going to take this slow and dig into the inner workings of the requests that are going to be coming back to us. So let's just get started and head on over to Visual Studio Code. And once in there, just make sure your, your API is up and running and listening on uh, port 3000. And we can head on over to our router.js file and scroll down to where we were working in the, the previous section. We have that login post request. And just below that, I'm going to give us some more space to start working on our, our very next API route that we're gonna set up here. To set this up, I'm going to create a new request handler here marked with the, the get method. We're going to name this user. The idea with this endpoint is it's going to be used just to get some very basic user information, such as ID, name, as well as email address. So setting up a, a function here to, to handle this request, we'll mark it as asynchronous, and then we'll just set it up with the, the request and the response parameters. And as we have been doing in all of our request handlers here, let's just set up a try catch block. We're gonna pass in an error or the catch block's gonna receive any errors if there, there are any errors in that try part of, of the try catch. And while we are here, let's just do some some basic setup here. Let's create a console.error, then we'll just create a new error and we'll pass in, let's say, error.message. Then underneath this, we haven't done this before, but let's just handle our like 500 internal server errors in a bit more of an elegant way. So if something does go wrong here, this is kind of deemed as an error in our API. Something went wrong with our code. So we generally use a, a HTTP code 500 for that. And so I can say, we can set up the response status with 500 and then we just pass through a JSON object and we'll do that with our timestamp. And we'll have a message here and then you can just type in fail to get user and we'll say internal server error and then for the code we'll just pass back so that's the the catch block all done and sorted for now let's just do a response dot send status and i'm just going to send it back simply a 200 just to make sure that we end the request response cycle when we do our testing and now this comes to the point that we've been building up to here. And, and it's at this point in our, our request handler that we either send back a 200 if everything went okay. But before we even begin doing the work to, to fetch the user from the database and then return it in this response, this is where we're going to need to do some conditional checking to see if the request that's coming in is authenticated. And just a reminder, the passport and the, the session management middleware that we set up earlier has done all the heavy lifting for us. It's attached those cookies to that login request. So if a, a user has logged in, those, those cookies are present on whatever front end or browser is sending any future requests. And those cookies are going to be available on the request header, which then Passport uses to evaluate whether it's a legitimate session or not. And then it, it amends the request object, attaches some properties onto it. And then we can now evaluate the request and, and take a look for those specific properties to determine if Passport has said that this request is indeed a authenticated one. So I wanted to take the time now to start digging into this request object that's coming through and let's start seeing what's on there. So let's set up a console group here. You can just reference it by console.group. And I'm just gonna format our string nicely here. I'm gonna say get user, and then I'll just say request details here. It's gonna give us another space here so that it's all formatted nicely. And then we can just set up a series of console logs here. I'm going to type this out once, and then I'm just going to copy this a couple of times. Let's do that four times, and then we'll end this, this group. So we'll say console.group, that's console.group end. And in our console logs here, I'm just going to put some hyphens just to give us a nice formatted message that we can take a look at. In the very next console log, I want to take a look at the request body. So we'll just say request body and then we'll pass in the request body that's coming through. I wanted to take a look at the parameters and we can do that in a similar way. Similar way. And then I also wanted to take a look at the, the request headers. All right, so up until this point, all of these properties that I'm referencing are just the basic properties that are available to us uh, from the express request that's coming through. And so there's nothing fancy here. I just let's spin up our server, take a, a look and see what we're getting at this point in time. 
So make sure your server is running and there's no errors and we can head on over to uh, back to Postman. You're going to have to hit our register endpoint to register user. And then we can hit the, the login with our user that we've we've been using in the last section and we can just hit a send here. So now that we have that fresh login session with the cookies attached to the request, just a quick note that in Postman for every domain that you're kind of using, and in this case, our domain's localhost 3000, it's going to store the, the cookies in a setting that available to future requests. So you can see the app auth and app auth sig cookies are, are stored here. And we're gonna open up a new a tab here to create a new request. And we can just quickly take a look at, at this. There's currently, there's no cookies here, but we'll, we'll set that up in a moment. For now, let's just actually set up the request. So we'll say HTTP, and then that'll be localhost 3000 and then API slash user. That's going to be this new user request that we've set up. Let's go and back, head on back and just hit a brand new login here just to make sure we have a new session. And if we take a look at our cookies now, you'll see that the app auth and app auth signature cookies are available to us. And so when we make this request, it's going to be sent along with the request. So let's see that in action at, the, at this point in time. So let's hit send here in our API and you'll see that we do get back that 200. But in our terminal, you'll see, and let's just compare this to our console logs here. So we've got that request body, which is empty. The parameters are empty because we haven't uh, sent anything through on the request. But you'll see the request headers that come through. It's got some of the, the basic Postman stuff and the host, whatever. But the important thing to take note is that we have this cookie here. So that's important and that's interesting to see that that's coming on the request headers. And that's definitely being used by Passport to determine if this needs to be evaluated or not. Okay, so that's it for the simple properties that are available to us on the standard express request object. I see that the formatting is not quite right what I wanted. So I'm just going to remove that new line there. I'm going to actually append it in there. And that's kind of more what I'm looking for. And then we're going to go ahead and add two more console logs. We'll say console log. And then we're going to say request dot is authenticated. And then this is going to be the, the new properties that are available to us through the passport middleware. There's this function that we can reference called is authenticated. And then we just need to invoke that. And that's a, a function that's available to us that Passport has attached to the request object. And it's going to return a, a Boolean value just simply to, uh, is going to tell us if it thinks this request is authenticated or not. And then the next property that is available to us, and this is more out of interest and something that we will be using later is this request.user. And just so that you know, if we head back to the serialize function that we've written previously, whatever information that we put into the, the cookie. So the serial, serialized user function is used to stuff information into the cookie. And that's what's going to be attached to the request.user property onto the request. If once we save our work here and the, the server is running, let's just give ourselves a bit more space and head on back over to Postman. And I'm just going to make sure there's no cookies on, on this register request that's going through. We're going to register a new user. We're going to log in to create a new session. And then we will now hit a get request to our user endpoint. And now we can inspect those properties that are coming through. So we've got the body, the parameter, the headers that we've seen. And now we've got those two new properties, request.isAuthenticated. And you can see we get this value of true. We've got this user here, request user, and that's this ID and the email that comes through. And as I said just now, it's like the serializer stuffs the information into the cookie. And then the second part of that at like the end, once it's evaluated whether the user is authenticated, it passes to the deserializer function, which then finds the user attaches this information, the ID and the email, and then that's available to us now on that request object. So that's what it looks like when a, a valid request is coming through. Let's just do some nefarious behavior here and fiddle with the cookies. And so the way we can do that is click on the, the cookies here and just can do anything you want to kind of just change the value of this, this string. I'm simply going to uh, delete the first two characters after that equal sign. I'm going to click save. And so now we're going to be simulating an invalid cookie that's being sent through. And this is interesting. The response that we get back is a 200, obviously, because we haven't done the work that 
we need to do yet. We're still doing this inspection. But you'll see that the request dot is authenticated comes through is false, and the request dot uses is undefined. So we'll be able to know now that this is not a valid request. What is interesting here is that the passport session, or the passport middleware is actually clearing the cookies on the request or the, on the response that's being sent back. That's the case for an invalid cookie and the, those cookies were present. Let's just do another login to, to create a new session. Uh, we'll see that we, we have got cookies here and that's fine. And so what I wanted to do now is actually delete these cookies completely off the request and then send it through and see what happens. And you'll see that we get back that 200, we're getting the request.user is undefined and the request.authenticated is false. And that's because no cookies has, have actually been sent through and we've never hit that deserialized function. And so there's no user on the object either. And so with this information, we'll be able to know with certainty whether the request that's coming through is a valid authenticated one. And now that we have these two properties, we can begin doing the work to write some conditional logic to either reject this request or continue on with it. So let's take a short break here. We've done some digging into the request object to, to find out what information we get from the, the passport middleware. Let's take a short break here. In the next lesson, we'll start writing out that conditional logic. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.